Cilantro. Cilantro is a powerful detoxifier. It is also helpful in removing neurotoxins such as mercury from the body. Welcome to, yes, the Elegantly Raw Show. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so happy, happy, happy today because we have Donna Perone on today. And it's not every day that we get to see this New York City detox specialist who joins us regularly to speak about different things having to do with detox. So today we'll be discussing heavy metals. And I am making a recipe, quick, short, sweet, and to the point. Yes, that will help to get these toxins out. So here we are, look at the table. We have here cilantro and we've got these beauties. Let me show you exactly what we have lined up for you and let's get straight to it, shall we? We've got lemons, another one that's really helpful um, for detoxing the body. And we're going to be using the brand new Nama. Let me see if we can bring it a little closer to you, the juicer today. So let's see how I can get this close enough that you can see all the action. So this is the Nama. What we have to do is just clip on, just push this here, this clip here, open it up. And what's beautiful about this is that there is an order in which to put these things in. So first, this is the cilantro that's been washed and oh, the aroma, the aroma. One would think that something that's such a strong detoxifier and is so helpful in removing your toxins from the body wouldn't have such an alluring smell. But yes, when your medicine is straight from the earth and straight from nature, you get to enjoy it too and have fun with it. So first you put the leafy greens always in this brand new Nama J2 juicer. And if you don't know what it is, I made some videos last week about it and how to use it. So what I'm going to do, here's the beauty about this juicer. Normally, one would have to cut this up in small pieces like this, right, in order to juice. I just cut it in two pieces because it will take everything <laughs> just like that. So. I'm going to put actually, before I put that, I'm putting the lemon because it takes first the leafy greens, then it takes the softer fruit, and then the bigger fruit at the very end. So let me just cut this one in two, and I'll put this one in there as well. I'm going to have to come back and put some more in there because I have pretty much filled it up already. So maybe it's i haven't put too much in let me just see about getting this smaller in there okay there we go so let's go this is quick and easy and straight to the point first i'm going to take off the cover here because this is the part in which the juice goes and see it's juicing by itself so i can actually walk away and do absolutely nothing or while it's juicing i can just put some more in there as it's juicing. So if you notice, it's coming out here. This is the pulp. So what I did was I had cilantro and then I had the lemon next. And now you see that it's going by itself. I don't have to constantly feed it. I'm just putting this because I want more in there. And you put as much as you want or as little as you want, but you don't have to keep doing anything else with this juicer. So I'm putting another one. I'm putting three big ones today. Actually, it's going to end up being four. So that you don't have to drink it all in one day. If you have a really good refrigerator and you have a very excellent glass container with a great seal, with a very, the sealing is, the seal is important. How long it will, you know, stay fresh for and viable. The most important thing is that it is still viable. 
and just putting more of this in here. This is an amazing drink for the summer months as well because this is also extremely refreshing. And I do mean refreshing. It's wonderful if you're running about town to either take this with you or when you come home to have this waiting in the fridge, especially now with melon season just about to be over and you want something refreshing since you cannot use melons anymore because we don't have them anymore. I'm putting the last one in, so we're making this pour. That's how much how to empty this. You see, this is already full, so that's why I'm emptying it. This fills up pretty fast, so you do have to pay attention to that. So here's the juice. It's a green juice, of course, because the cilantro is green. The fruit that we're putting, except for the, except, and you notice when I click it, it stops so that if you have children and they want to go in there and play, they will not come to any harm with the blades or anything because the Nama takes care of that. So the minute that you pull the top open, it stops immediately. When you put the top back on, boom, it will go again. So I'm just going to put some on here. See, it goes on by itself. I don't even need to put the top on to cover it, but just because I like to keep things in place, I can leave it here now if I'd like to. I'll move this away because we need to get a glass to put this in. So here it is. I'm going to pour it. Let me, ch let me change hands here. And this scent, the aroma, I just find this to be so intoxicating. So here we go, using, of course, a martini glass. And to your health, Lechaim, bon appétit, bete bon. This is what? A beautiful glass of detoxic, detoxing drink, juice, whatever you want to call it looks like. And this will also be in the Elegantly Raw app, which I hope to finish this month and release this month. So... That's it for our juicing today and for our drink. Let me bring this up so you can see this. There you go, to your health and your wealth. And please help me to welcome Donna Peroni from New York City to the show. Hi, Hi. Doris. Hi there. I'm here today to talk to you all about heavy metal and chemical toxicity. Uh, I am a colon hydrotherapist here in New York City. I own my own wellness center, Gravity East Village. Come see me when visiting New York for a colonic. Uh, but I've been studying all different ways we could cleanse our body. So one of the things I feel is very important is to cleanse our bodies of heavy metal and chemical toxicity. And our environment is uh, inundated with these uh, heavy metal and chemical toxins. Uh, due to the industrial age. Um, it, it's found mostly in the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, and also the food that we eat. So we're going to explore uh, just a snippet of my class that I normally teach, which is much longer. So I want to give you my top uh, points uh, that I share on this topic. Um, and it's an important to topic because I think most people overlook the importance of cleansing their bodies regularly uh, of these toxins that we're exposed to. Uh, whether you live in the big city like me or you're in the country, we all have exposure. The top metals that are of concern uh, tend to be mercury, lead, uh, also arsenic, cadmiums, uh, and then there's aluminum, which is not a heavy metal, it's actually considered a soft metal. The weight of the metal determines whether it's a heavy metal or not. Um, there are 35 metals of concern, uh, but 23 of them are heavy metals. Now, there's lots of metals that uh, we need to have for good health, like iron, for instance, uh, would be something you want very small amounts, zinc, uh, nickel. But the problem is because of manufacturing, uh, agriculture, uh, just industry in general, um, this could be a reason why we're exposed to it, just breathing the air every day. Um, so they, um, 
enter the body through the skin, um, through eating, and then uh, the air. I think I just said that. <laughs> um, so agri agriculture is uh, one thing we have to be aware of, the way, the way our food is grown. Uh, manufacturing, um, pharmaceuticals, if you're on medications, there could be some heavy metals possibly uh, in the medicines that you might be ingesting. Um, also, uh, cigarettes uh, is another way. Uh, some childhood vaccines, um, paint, uh, various things. So we'll be exploring this uh, a bit. But to cover the main metals, uh, mercury, for instance, a lot of times we hear uh, that we have to be careful, for instance, if one eats fish. Now, I'm a long-term vegan. I eat mostly raw food like Dorit. Um, so I don't eat fish. I don't recommend it. But many people do eat fish. Um, and uh, many people know if, if a woman's pregnant, she should avoid eating fish because of the heavy metals. It could be dangerous to the, the unborn uh, child. So we want to avoid fish, eating fish due to this reason, uh, whether it's fish from lakes or from the ocean. Our earth actually, uh, is, there's a degassing that occurs uh, atmospherically. So actually we're exposed to mercury all the time simply because of the earth's crust. Mining, um, also any paints uh, manu manufactured uh, till about 1990. So uh, oftentimes uh, there's some concern if children or uh, little babies might eat a little chip of paint, it could be dangerous. Pesticides. Thermometers contain mercury. Uh, don't break that uh, thermometer. Dental amalgams, so those silver fillings are uh, kind of a no-no. We're gonna talk about that in more detail. Um, and also skin tightening creams of all things may have a mercury. Lead is actually considered a soft metal. It generally is used for any plumbing or um, like drains or pipes. Any homes built prior to, prior to 1940 uh, really, uh, the pipes uh, would be a problem because they may have lead. Uh, I grew up drinking a lot of water from the tap. So when I did my heavy metal testing, I actually had high lead, uh, probably mainly for that reason. So I do recommend, uh, even today, even though our pipes might have been replaced, we still have some concern that all the pipes are safe. Uh, so you may also want to consider just in general for any uh, with your drinking water that have good filtration. And many people overlook that the shower also would need a good filter on that. Uh, on average, uh, taking a hot shower, the steam, you may uh, ingest up to eight glasses of water. And so if you don't have a good filter on your shower head, that could be a major concern. Also, 2.5 million tons of batteries are produced every year that contain lead. Um, also, uh, x-ray shielding, ammunition, pesticides, cigarettes, paint pigments, PVC uh, plastics, radiological procedures, and intravenous nutrition. You may have exposure to lead. Arsenic is another uh, metal of concern. It can be found in our drinking water. Um, it also is manufactured uh, for the use of pesticides, um, any manufacturing in general, our fish, rat poisoning, uh, paints and fungicides. Cadmiums are another concern. Um, also uh, can be found in paint pigments. If you're an artist like me, I used a lot of pastel um, and, and paints. And so sometimes you get that on your hands or breathing that in might be of uh, exposure. Uh, mining, insecticides, fertilizers, shellfish, very high in cadmiums, be careful of that. Uh, cigarette smoke, dental alloys, and also uh, exhaust and motor oil from uh, gasoline, uh, cadmiums. And then aluminum uh, is a soft metal. We've heard a lot about aluminum being uh, not great and it tends to hold in the brain, may cause uh, many diseases or ne neurological issues. But aluminum can be found in cosmetics such as lipstick, toothpaste, vaginal douche, baking soda, food additives, antacids, uh, vaccines, buffered aspirin, nasal spray, automotive exhaust, to tobacco uh, smoke as well. Of course, there's aluminum foil. Uh, I grew up with my family oftentimes wrapping up my food in aluminum foil, and they didn't seem to think that was a problem. 
And then oftentimes cookware, these days people have replaced their co aluminum cookware, but if you have an old pot that you got at a rummage sale, you, you may have an aluminum pot, so that would not be a good idea. Also, if you buy canned food or soda, the, the, if the can isn't lined properly, you'll be exposed to aluminum. And then unfortunately, uh, chemtrails. Some people think that's all uh, not real, but it certainly is. Chemtrails are real and we are having aluminum fragments dropped into the atmosphere uh, in the effort to control the weather. Also consider acid rain. Um, that may be also another way we get exposed to aluminum. And finally, fireworks. So uh, these are just a few, the main ones, but um, we could go on, but uh, those are the top ones. So there's about 70,000 chemicals dumped into the environment and 65,000 can be uh, potentially hazardous. Uh, on record, maybe 25% of Americans suffer from heavy metal poisoning, but there's so much more that have exposure, may not be uh, where they're poisoned, but it is a major concern. Um, a baby's umbilical cord blood uh, is said to contain about 287 industrial chemi chemicals. 180 of that uh, can cause cancer. 217 are toxic to the brain and nervous system for a little baby. Uh, so moms out there have to really detox before they consider uh, getting pregnant. Um, once the, the, these heavy metals are in the body, they tend to form uh, free radicals and they can multiply like a million times over uh, into deadly chain reactions. Um, so this is a you know, major concern because the, um, the uh, free radicals are very damaging to our cells. Um, and uh, that can be a concern down the line to creating disease like cancer. Um, these heavy metals and chemicals can uh, accumulate in our tissues, like our fleshiness of our body, also in any organ. Uh, the causes of, you know, what could go wrong could be nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, neurological disorders, and can lead to autoimmune immune disorders or diseases, as well as cancer. Uh, any mental disorders may be linked as well to heavy metal toxicity. Um, the root cause of, cause of many diseases could be uh, a heavy metal toxicity. So it is something that we do need to give some attention to. So these free radicals that get produced can destroy the cells or damage them. And then uh, it creates a very overly acidic environment in the body. And this can con compromise the functioning of your central nervous system, immune system, cardiovascular system, and, and affect any organ in the body. And also these heavy metals can produce cholesterol, uh, causing the body, I should say, to produce cholesterol and uh, prevent the absorption of calcium. And then the more heavy metal ions that you might have in your body, the more the buildup of acidic waste can occur. And that can uh, cause uh, calcium deposits to get uh, caught in your arteries. So that can lead to a heart attack. So pretty serious stuff. People may not link that as a, way, a reason why someone would get a heart attack if they aren't addressing heavy, heavy metal toxicity. And other uh, symptoms of heavy metal toxic toxicity <laughs> uh, can be learning disabilities, especially in our children, uh, low energy levels, insomnia, uh, anxiety, uh, chronic fatigue, depression, or any mental challenges. Uh, yeast overgrowth, if you're having some yeast infections, can't get over it, it's possible the heavy metals attach themselves to uh, yeast and candida. You may have a low thyroid, you may have a hyperthyroid, uh, any damage to your blood composition, uh, hypertension, uh, hair falling out is a typical symptom if you uh, have high heavy metal poisoning. Um, so, um, you know, and that's just the naming a short list. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about testing. Um, when I got my first test uh, many years ago for heavy metal uh, screening, I did get a uh, urine uh, collection kit. It's a metabolic metal screening test. I get, did get that through my doctor. Um, and uh, basically, I had to take a um, sulfur agent. It's like, um, it's called DMSA. They gave that to me with the kit. And that sulfur agent is a chelator. And I had to collect my urine for several hours. So I decided that day, since I was going to stay home, to clean my apartment. 
And the doctor neglected to tell me that I could have a reaction. And I did. I immediately had to like lie down and rest because I felt like I was achy all, all over as if I was having the flu. I was really surprised. And I knew that that was a sign that the chelator I was given, which was very weak, um, actually was releasing some heavy metals into my bloodstream. Uh, and I, I had a reaction. And lo and behold, my I had high lead, mercury, and thallium. Thallium is found in art supplies, and I'm an artist. So um, when you get your heavy metal test, you really want the do doctor to test ideally for more than those top couple that I mentioned earlier. You want him to screen you for like a, a full dozen of them. You want to get the full picture of what's really going on. Because, you know, how would I have known that I would have had high thallium? That was something that um, came up because we we're looking for at all the metals. So um, that would be my number one pick in terms of the type of test to do. It's good to get a baseline with a test like that because it's, I feel the most accurate. Uh, our second choice would be a blood test. Um, I have a holistic doctor in New Jersey, uh, Dr. Flowers. Uh, he's wonderful. And he does spectrocell testing. So um, I have gone to a regular doctor and have done like a basic vitamin and mineral test and been told in the past that my vitamin D and my B12 were normal. And then once I did the spectrocell testing with my holistic MD, I found that my D and my B12 was actually low. So spectrocell testing actually will test whether the nutrition is getting into the cell. And the spectrocell testing does offer a uh, heavy metal toxicity screening as well. So if you can get that done, that would be better. Um, but blood tests would be another option. Uh, next, we have hair analysis. Uh, that's something you can order online. It's not the most accurate for mercury. As a matter of fact, it's not accurate at all for mercury. Uh, but it is accurate for several of the other metals. And uh, it also offers uh, some mineral testing as well. Um, if uh, someone is autistic, uh, there are no metals found in the hair. So the hair analysis would not be accurate for that individual. Um, Nap Napoleon Bonaparte, who um, uh, the famous Napoleon, <laughs> he uh, actually, they did a hair analysis on him and they were able to test him a hundred years later that he was poisoned with arsenic and they were able to confirm that. So hair analysis is, is another option. It's good maybe to follow up with that type of test. If you have colored hair, like I do, <laughs> um, you may not be able to wash your hair for quite a while if you decide to test with a hair analysis. Um, so now we're going to talk about solutions. I love that, talking about that. And my favorite way to address heavy metal and chemical, chemical toxicity would be to use an infrared sauna. So at my wellness center, Gravity East Village, uh, if you can get here in New York City, I do have an infrared sauna. It's a wonderful sauna. Uh, and that is how I brought my test results from being high uh, for mercury, lead, and thallium, and then also arsenic. Um, down to zero is by using an infrared sauna. And uh, the sauna has many benefits, but we'll talk mostly about how it helps us with heavy metal uh, toxicity. So with an ordinary sauna, that's also good too. So if you have access to a, a Russian bathhouse style sauna, that's wonderful. But the, the infrared sauna is more detoxifying than a Russian bathhouse sauna because it warms you from the inside out. So it's a, a more of a detoxifying experience, really um, addressing um, the, the infrared waves go all the way to the tissue, about an inch and a half in, all the way to the bone. Um, and it's also, you absorb about 93% of the waves um, as well. And um, the infrared sauna is also easier to, if you're not a fan of saunas, to tolerate. It's about 25% cooler than a Russian bathhouse sauna. Um, and it takes about 10 minutes to get a sweat going typically. And once the sweating starts happening, it's much more profuse sweating than a regular Russian bathhouse uh, type of sauna. So there's many reasons why uh, getting uh, an infrared sauna uh, session would be more beneficial and help you uh, quicker to uh, bring those heavy metals down. I've had many clients coming in to use the sauna uh, with great success. Um, and it's safe to use a sauna. Uh, the waves are similar to sunlight. And the saunas today are 
uh, really extremely low in radiation. So there's no concern about that as well. So uh, big fan, if you're in New York City, please come see us uh, to use our infrared sauna. Uh, something else that you could do is uh, remove those amalgam fillings. So if you have any silver fillings in your mouth, uh, like I had, uh, you want to have uh, them taken out. But if you have a, a, a regular dentist and a very holistic minded dentist, you might want to seek one out because if they remove the amalgam fillings, technically the dentist has to wear like a space suit. He's got to really protect himself. It's highly toxic when they remove those amalgam fillings. So um, think about it. You have something in your mouth and you're chewing on it, grinding away, and a dentist would have to wear a space suit in order to remove that out of your mouth. So you don't want to keep them in a minute longer. You don't want to remove those uh, amalgam fillings all at once. Let's say you have five or six of them in your mouth. You wouldn't do it all in one week. Uh, you want to uh, maybe work on one or two, wait a bit, and then uh, you can continue to remove them over time. Um, also, when the dentist works on this issue, he's going to put a rubber dam in your mouth and a rubber tent. He's going to have something in place to protect you so you don't swallow the filling or inhale any vapors once he removes that out of your mouth. So this is very, very important. Chelation therapy is another method uh, that people will use. They go to a usually holistic-minded doctor and spend thousands, thousands of dollars to have chelation therapy. It's done with an IV. Uh, usually takes at least 30 visits, and each visit's about three hours. Um, very in invasive way of getting heavy metal toxins out of the body. And I, I do not recommend to go this way because it's very um, hard on the, on the kidneys. Unless you are really poisoned, you're in an immediate emergency, I would say to skip the chelation therapy. And my uh, sources tell me um, that... Uh, if you take it through um, a pill, like a chelation pill type of thing, uh, orally, that it doesn't remove the entire molecule very effectively. So it's going to leave something behind. So this would not be my favorite way to go. Another way of relieving heavy metal toxicity is uh, using EDTA uh, chelation suppositories. So at night nighttime, when you're ready to go to bed, you would put a little a uh, suppository in your butt, and it works ionically. So the heavy metals uh, have an ionic charge that's positive, and your uh, chelation is a negative charge. So it has a way to draw out and attract the heavy metals out of your body while you're sleeping. And then the next morning when you pee and poop, you will pee and poop those heavy metals out of your body. <laughs> uh, that began being used back in World War II, World War II, uh, there were workers at a battery plant, plant uh, and they were exposed to lead uh, from, it was a uh, battery and paint uh, plant. So uh, it was a successful thing and it continues today. The cost for using that for about 30 days is probably about $300. Um, another way to uh, relieve heavy metal toxicity is what Dorit was suggesting by uh, ingesting Corel, uh, I'm sorry, cilantro. <laughs> so cilantro is, is a powerful detoxifier and the way she demonstrated is perfect. Make a vegetable juice with cilantro and that will be a wonderful method to keep things in check. Um, you could also eat cilantro. You could do it in a tincture, um, blend it, just any way you could get it. It's a wonderful way to uh, detoxify it. You could even cook it and that would be fine. Corella is uh, also um, a great way to detoxify from heavy metal toxicity. It's a single cell freshwater algae, and it's actually rich in protein and vitamins and minerals. It's also an appetite suppressor, believe it or not. Um, and uh, it works in the same way. It attracts heavy metals and carries them out of the body. Um, there are many brands of, of Corella, um, and you wanna make sure you get a clean source. So at Gravity, I do a muscle testing technique called quantum reflex analysis. I am a practitioner of QRA. And when clients come in, I muscle test, if you can get to my center, um, and I could test uh, certain acupuncture points for the parathyroid to, to, to see if the body wants to do a heavy metal cleanse. And many of the products that I test with contain Corella. 
Uh, some are a little more gentle and some are a little more stronger. So if you have a QRA practitioner in your area, this is a, a great way to test to see exactly the right product for you and also the dosage. So uh, come see me in New York for that. I'd love to see you. Um, but yes, Corella uh, is a wonderful way uh, to, to detox. Uh, there was a report that the Japanese uh, during the atomic bomb uh, in Hir Hiroshima um, took eight grams of daily of Corella and that was helpful to them in um, uh, saving their lives, yes. Finally, uh, we have bentonite clay. So not the usual bentonite clay. You'd buy a special brand that's designed for putting it in your bathtub. Um, you could also do a foot bath as well. And it's 100% pure pharmaceutical grade uh, bentonite clay. So you would actually get in the tub with the bentonite clay or the foot bath and you'd immerse yourself. And it again, ionically will draw out heavy metals out of the body uh, due to the high ionic surface uh, charge uh, negatively to pull that uh, those metals out of the body and track them. So that's another thing you can do. And these clays do not clog up your tub. Um, also, uh, zeolite is another uh, product. It's not for everyone. I find that certain brands out there either are too weak or they could possibly be too strong. So uh, getting muscle tested by a practitioner will help determine if that is the right product for you. Um, the zeolite uh, comes from a volcanic ash uh, that's naturally occurring and uh, it's a crystalline mineral that occurs from the volcanic ash that's made into this formula. And uh, it actually creates an alkalinity uh, in the body, alkaline pH. Um, and it's non-toxic. So that is another uh, method. It's a little expensive, uh, zeolite, uh, but it's another way that can be very effective in removing heavy metals out of the body. And that's my talk. How am I doing, uh, Dorit? Well, so... Um, I uh, could talk a little more about these things. I guess I have a, a few more minutes. And I'd be glad to uh, share a little more information. Um, so what else can I tell you about um, heavy metal toxicity? Um, I kind of flew through my talk there. Uh, well, I am a big fan of the sauna. Um, and I could tell you another story. So I had brought all my levels down to zero uh, initially by using the infrared sauna when I had high heavy metal toxicity. Uh, and then I had changed my water uh, ionizer. And when I purchased the water ionizer and I went from a, a water distiller to the ionizer, I am, um, um, you know, the, the woman had suggested I get an extra filter that would take arsenic out of the, uh, the water. And I thought it was a gimmick and I didn't buy it. It was actually a gift given to me and I didn't want to add on a lot of stuff because it was a gift. Um, and lo and behold, two years later, I went back to my doctor, did the spectrocell testing, and my arsenic levels were through the roof. They were very high, just in two years of drinking water that wasn't properly filtered. So um, I would recommend that, you know, to make sure that you're very careful with your water. Uh, at that point, I put in a under the, the sink uh, water filtration uh, to help protect myself. Um, and I also... Um, um, use uh, a Berkey. I love the Berkey and uh, I put my drinking water through that as well. And since then with testing, my uh, heavy metals have gone back down to zero again. So I have figured it out. So I'm a big fan of testing. It's a good idea to pay attention to these things. And I'm so glad that you all uh, got to listen to my edited version of my talk today. And if you're in New York City, you know, please come and see me and uh, at Gravity East Village uh, for a colonic or for an infrared sauna session. And um, yeah, if you're not in New York, you could sign up or subscribe to my emails. I teach classes periodically on subjects like this. And uh, many of the classes are free or at low cost. So you can subscribe by just going to gravityeastvillage.com. And I thank so you so Anna, much. Donna, we yeah? have we have some people here with some comments. I put them up on the screen. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can read them. No, it's I don't see. Oh, let me see if I can see comments. 
I have oh, some wow. questions. There's some questions. Okay, let's see. Uh, is it a matter of doing a liver detox? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, the liver is the, a, a detoxifier of the organ. The problem with uh, heavy metal toxicity, like let's say you did a juice cleanse or you did a liver cleanse, the metals really hold in the cells. Um, they stick to you. And so even if you do an ordinary, like a coffee enema, or you take some herbs for a liver cleanse, you probably will not eliminate heavy metal toxicity um, because of that reason. You need something like some of the remedies I suggested that's actually going to attract it ionically and move it out of the body. So uh, it's a very definite thing. Okay, we have we have another another one. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Uh, is, please ask her why the symptoms of heavy metal taxis in the R. Please ask why okay. the symptoms. Okay, this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one. Is this also why celiac disease is so common today? Yes, it is a reason why. Uh, I would say, you know, the industrial age began in the 1800s and the cancer rates, you know, going into the 20th century uh, skyrocketed and continued to do so. So uh, that's due to the amount of the, f the factories, uh, the pesticides, as we mentioned over and over again, the industrial age and the pollution is just in the air and gets carried all over the planet. Also, Tom wants to know, what do you think are the symptoms of heavy metal toxicity? Uh, I did mention in my talk uh, those symptoms, but I yes. He might have come on a bit late. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, just, just, just just watch the show all over again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. at the beginning of the show, uh, I covered that. But yes, uh, if you have uh, issues, uh, it could be neurological issues, learning issues. Uh, it could lead to uh, a Parkinson's or an Alzheimer's. It could lead to uh, any, uh, uh, like an autoimmune disease. Uh, because the body becomes inundated with this these toxins and then disease will occur. So um, most diseases, I would say, could be a root cause, could be due to being poisoned by heavy metal and chemical toxins. Okay, and so Pat wants to know, do you know someone like yourself in San Francisco? Uh, I do know a gravity method, a colonic therapist in San Francisco. Her name is Cindy Pavala. I think it's P, P like Peter, A, V, I, A. And she has a center in San Francisco. Adriana says, very informative, thank you. Uh -huh. and, uh, and also we have some other comments, but we're running late, unfortunately. So uh, Dominique says she has amalgam fillings. Yeah, you wanna get those out. Yep. And um, if you can go with a low infused ceramic filling, uh, that would be the best option. Um, you could go with gold, but it's still metal. Gold is an option, but uh, it's like having an antenna in your head when you have metal in your head. So you want to go with porcelain or the ne the newest best thing is the low infused ceramic, which is quite durable. Great. And so we have some other comments. Let me see what's the newest one here. I just have to scroll down, please. Oh, she, yeah. Okay, Tom. Yeah, she's going to be coming back in January. I was about to announce it next. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tom said he'll rewatch the video because he was on at the beginning. But um, I know there are quite a few other comments, but we do need to go. But I'm going to ask um, you, Donna, to when you have some time this week to go back on and just answer anything sure. that you wish you, you can do directly. And in the meantime, just so you know, she, the Donna will be back in January for fasting. We're yeah focusing on fasting in January. Yeah. So please make sure you tune into that. And in the meantime, what I would like to do is to actually add uh, some more of this to another glass and show you just how incredibly appetizing, in my opinion, anyhow, this looks and why it's so important for you to make sure that the foods that you are consuming are assisting you in getting rid of all the toxins that are in your body rather than just looking for treatments afterwards and still eating and drinking the same thing. So Donna, until January, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I love your red nail polish next to that green. 
<laughs> you know, that's a woman's point of view. <laughs> you would notice that. So I know there are other comments here. So, so Donna will go online and, and respond to them when sure. she has some time. But in the meantime, I wanted to say thanks to everyone for tuning in today. I so look forward to having some more fun with you on this show with Donna and, of course, with other people, too. But in the meantime, everyone, thank you so very much for tuning in and make sure you're back again next week. Same time, same place and drink your Corella. <laughs> Mm-hmm.